Hello! Welcome to Photo School. In this video, we will show you how to use the Viltrox Speed Booster and the Viltrox Adapter to mount Canon EF lenses on a Canon EOS M camera. I'm going to show you pictures taken with the Speed Booster, the regular adapter and Canon lenses. I'm going to show you the same for videos. At the end you can decide for yourself whether the quality of these Viltrox products is good enough to use yourself. If you like this video, click subscribe and like, and leave a comment. I can learn from that to make better videos for you. But subscribing that would help me a lot, so please do. Thank you, enjoy this video. The speed booster reduces the focal length of a lens by a factor of 0.71. APS-C cameras therefore behave like full-frame cameras. In addition, you win one aperture stop and a 4.0 lens becomes a 2.8 lens. The regular adapter does nothing more than make EF lenses fit on an EOS M camera. Placing this adapter goes exactly the same as placing a lens on an EOS M camera. It goes the same with the adapter as well as the speed booster. Fitting EF lenses on these adapters is exactly the same as fitting EF lenses on normal EOS cameras. Removing the ring is exactly the same as removing a lens. I tested the quality of the speed booster, by photographing a standard setup of a test chart and a doll. The test chart was always exposed at 1 80th of a second, with an aperture of 8.0 and ISO 100 and an external flash. The doll was illuminated with a 100 watt LED light and photographed with 1 100th of a second and aperture 8.0 at 400 ISO. In this test I use two lenses. The Canon EF 16 to 35 mm aperture 4.0 liters USM is lens and the EF M 15 to 45 mm aperture 3.5 to 6.3 AS STM because both lenses are comparable in focal length. In the photo of the test card, with a 16 to 35 mm 4.0 lens, with adapter, there are actually no major detail problems. The sharpness is sufficiently present everywhere, and there are no issues with the 100% crop. When using the same lens with the speed booster, there are no noticeable issues either, and certainly the 100% crop does not seem to be worse. The much cheaper 15 to 45 mm lens, often sold as a kit lens together with ESM cameras, actually fares just as well as the much more expensive Canon L lens, with both the speed booster and the adapter. If we look at the three 100% crops side by side, you will not see any remarkable differences. I was allowed to use one of my daughter's dolls as a model and I lit it with a 100 watt LED light, and then photographed it with a 16 to 35 mm Canon L lens, with adapter and with a speed booster and with a 15 to 45 mm M lens. Again, you don't see any major differences, between the quality, and sharpness of the photo. It is striking that when you zoom in on the eyes with 100% crops, which is in my opinion, a good representation of how sharp the photo actually is, there are no major differences between the three different combinations, although the photo from the M lens, appears to be slightly lighter. Despite the same light conditions, a miniature train track was lit with the same LED lamp. You see that the camera occasionally, has some difficulty, due to the many movements, to focus on the right point. But between the different combinations, there are no clear differences. Although it seems that the speed booster makes the image a bit darker, but possibly also a bit sharper. Which would actually surprise you, because glass is placed between your camera and the lens by the speed booster. The relatively cheap EOS M lens also does well here. All in all, I do not see any major differences in the three different tests, between the combination with the adapter, the speed booster, and the EOS M lens. So, we are at the end of this short test, of the Viltrox speed booster, and of the Viltrox adapter, we have seen, with the examples of a test card, but also the doll as a model, that the differences between the photos with the adapter and with the speed booster, are small. Even the differences with the EOS M kit lens, which is considerably cheaper than the Canon L lens we used, are certainly not great. 
so you can say that buying the Viltrox adapter for a small 40 euros from Amazon is a no-brainer. Especially if you have a NeoSem camera and EOCF lenses. They will all fit on your EOSem camera, and lenses are expensive, so if they fit on your new camera, just do it. So if you have a NeoSem camera and EOCF lenses, buy that Viltrox adapter. Much cheaper than the Canon adapter, autofocus and lighting work fine. The image quality is certainly not noticeably worse. Then the speed booster, which ensures that your focal length becomes shorter so that your EOSM camera behaves like a full frame camera, while your camera has an APS-C size sensor. That is a nice advantage. It means, for example, that your depth of field will be less and you will have a nice blurred background more quickly. In addition, you also win an aperture stop, which means that your lenses become brighter with this speed booster. For example, a 4.0 lens becomes a 2.8 lens, and that is worth it. Especially when there is less light, you can use it well. The speed booster is considerably more expensive than the adapter, it costs 135 euros, but that is much cheaper than a comparable alternative, which costs 500 to 600 euros. So short conclusion, the Viltox adapter definitely do it, if you have EF lenses. The speed booster, if you need the shortening of the focal length, and a stop of extra light, do it. It is 135 euros, with both products the autofocus works well, and your automatic exposure works well. There is one exception, the Canon EOS L85 mm 1.2, the autofocus does not work with the speed booster, but that is already a very bright lens for which you don't really need the speed booster. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a like, and subscribing would help my channel immensely, so that in the future I can make more, hopefully, interesting videos for you about photography and the basics of photography. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you come back to my channel soon.